Hello guys. Hello. My name is Abertina Mayenti. Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time joining me today, I am a family life and relationship coach. My passion is ex establishing and uh, building and restoring relationships using kingdom principles. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit the red, the red subscribe button and then hit the bell thing. That way you can always get notifications whenever I upload new videos. I, I upload new videos um, twice, once or twice a week. So you can always get, you know, videos. So unless you, you uh, subscribe, you're not going to see my videos. So hit the button and subscribe, share and like, okay? All right, so uh, tonight's topic is um, God's divine idea for divorce and remarriage. This is a very controversial topic. You know, um, I was doing the uh, research, and when you look on the internet, when you're reading stuff, you see a lot of different things. You know, people, everybody has their own point of view. Everybody got different videos. Everybody got different stuff saying about this. So I really, you know, it, it, it was a very touching um, topic for me. So I already did uh, some extensive research and I went to the Lord to ask him for guidance so that I could be able to deliver this message as he will allow me to. So let's get into the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I commit this meeting to you. I say, Lord, you dis disrupt my flesh and you yet allow the Holy Spirit to you know speak through me. Not what I want to say, but what you want to tell your people. Because, Lord, I know this is the cry of your heart. You hit divorce because divorce brings problems to families. And it, 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 it enables families to have, to, you know, to be dysfunctional. And that, that's not your will. So, Lord, I pray that you speak to your people and to write them so that they can make the right choices. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yeah, so like I was saying, this topic is a very controversial topic. People, you know, I did a video on Facebook on Sunday. I got people, you know, attacking me. You know, people saying all kinds of stuff. You know, they're trying to, um, you know, say something different. It does. I mean, I go by, I go exactly with what the Bible says. So divorce is not. It was not. It was never God's idea. God wanted the family to be together. That's why He created Adam and Eve, and told them to you know, go multiply, you know, discover the purpose and multiply the earth, take control, you know, have children, raise them to God and men and women and all that stuff. So it was not God's idea for divorce. It was man's idea. All right. So uh, <clears throat> God intends for us to be married till death. Till death do us part. That's, that's the plan of God for marriages. So uh, marriage is also, it's a reflection of God's love for mankind. He wants us to reflect that love, that agape love that he has for us. You know, marriage is not just only to be in love or to be happy or, you know, to have children. It's more than that. Marriage is a, you know, it's a, it's a reflection of, of God's love for mankind. And it's also, you know, uh, marriage is also uh, um, there to bring couples together, two partners together, to accomplish the purpose for God for the life, you know, the purpose of God for the life. So that's what marriage is all about. So um, divorce is very common nowadays in the world. People just divorce for no reason, you know, especially the stars in Hollywood. They'll stay together for three months and, oh, you know, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't, um, I don't see her anymore. We're not compatible. And they just go and divorce. You know, I was looking online and I saw the, the prices of divorce. That was very devastating to me. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is so precious to the eyes of God. And these people are doing this thing, you know, just charging a little bit amount to destroy this thing, you know, this precious thing of God. 
159, $200 seeking divorce, no court divorce. You know, it, 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 it grieves the heart of God. That's like, that was never God's intention for people to just take divorce or marriage so lightly. You know, it, 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 was, it was never God's uh, 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 intention. So you know, let's go to Malachi chapter, chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. It say, um, okay, what did it say? Malachi chapter 14, sorry, chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. It said, you cry out, why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? I will tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young. But you have been unfaithful to her, though she remain faithful, though she remain your faithful partner, the wife of your marriage vow. Didn't the law make you one with your wife? You guys are one. He said in the beginning he made male, male and female. You guys are one in the body and in spirit and and you are and I mean he said. Didn't the law make you one with your wife in body, spirit, in body and spirit? You are his. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. He wants you to raise godly children. You know, we, you guys are one. So guard your heart. Remain loyal to your wife. Remain loyal to your wife of your youth. For I hate divorce. That's what the law says. I don't know what Indian people don't really understand. He said, I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with purity. Okay? Says the Lord of heaven's army. So guard your heart to not be unfaithful to your wife. Increase the heart of, of God when men are unfaithful to their wives. So then we come to verse 17 and he said, you have worried me. You, you have worried the Lord with your words. How have you worried him? You ask, you ask him, how have you worried him? You ask, you have worried him by saying that all who do evil are good in, in the Lord's sight. And he is pleased with them. You have worried him by asking, where is God justice? Where is Something like you know, you exhaust him. You make him so you know, you 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 make him tired with 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 all these things. And they keep telling you he's exhausted, he's weary. You know, why would you worry him? Because he's telling you guys they say do not divorce. And then they are saying yeah that he said because you worry me because he said uh, all those who do evil are, are, are good in the sight of God. So yes, because you see other people getting divorced, so you think it's okay to get divorced. He said, do not, he hate divorce. He's saying that in Malachi. Malachi chapter 2, verse 4 to 17. Read it. Go and read it and, 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 and digest on that, you know, meditate on that word. He said he hate divorce. All right? People, people just do it. Do you even put your children into consideration? Do you put your children into consideration when you're thinking about getting divorced from your spouse? Your kids are gonna be gonna have siblings that they don't know from anywhere. They're gonna sleep in shared rooms with different people that they're gonna be calling siblings. Those, 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 that's, those are some of the reasons that you know cause uh, 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 incest and all that stuff. You know they're gonna be calling some predator. You don't even know this man you're getting married to very well. He might be a, a predator. Your, your kids gonna be referring to him as a father. You know. Or a wicked, pretentious stepmother that gonna pretend to you when you're around to behave nice to them, and then when you're gone, she's being so mean to them. Do you consider all of that? The kids are the ones that suffer these things. So we have to consider all of those. We, we cannot be so self-centered, egocentric, you know, where we just sit there because it's our happiness, you know, you, you lock your door, you and your new spouse, they're in the room having fun, and the kids are out there stressed out. They're not happy and you don't even care about their feelings. 
that's not right. You have to consider your children in doing these things. You know, you have to consider them. All right? So he yes, yeah, so he said he said we should not we he hit the vote. So now let's go that into uh um first Corinthians, no sorry, second Corinthians chapter seven, verse ten to sixteen. He said, But but for those who are married, this is very important, pay attention to this. For those who are married, I have I have a command that comes not from me. That's what Paul is saying now. I have a command that comes not from me, but from the law. A wife must not leave her husband. But if she does leave him, let her remain single or else be reconciled to him. And the husband must not leave his wife. So that's it. He said if you ever leave your wife, if you ever divorce your wife, you have to remain single until you can reconcile with your husband. Because why God hates divorce. Alright, so let's go down again and see. He said, Now I will speak to the rest of you, though I do not have a direct command from the law. If a Christian man has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to continue living with him, he must not leave her. And if a Christian woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue living with her, she must not leave him. For the Christian wife or husband brings holiness to the marriage. Otherwise, your children would not be holy, but now they are holy. Okay, so let me let me stop there because we're going to go down to 15. If he said that if you marry, let's say for example, you got married, you and your you and your spouse, you guys met when you when you when you both were not Christians, you were drinking together, going to the club. You know, doing worthy things together, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, taking drugs together, watching pornographers together. And then you come to one of the, one, you know, either the male or female, one of them come to realize that these things are not worthy, you know, they want to serve God. You want to serve God. So you now, you, 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 you have uh, 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 received your salvation, and your spouse has not yet received his salvation or her salvation. Paul is saying that you are not allowed to leave her. Or him, you cannot. You're not allowed to leave your spouse. You know, but because of you, because you have received Christ, because you have received your salvation, so because of you, your family will be made holy. Your family will be sanctified. So because of that, your children will not be unclean anymore. Your children will be clean and holy before God. So you cannot leave your own believing spouse. You have to pray them, pray for them. And, you know, pray for them into the kingdom. Pray, pray that they receive their salvation as well. So if they're willing to live for you, you don't leave them. All right, so let's go down and see what he said next. In uh, verse 15, he said, But if the husband or wife who is a believer insists on leaving, let them go. In such cases, the Christian husband or wife is no longer bound to the other. For God has called us, called you to live in peace. Don't you wives realize that your husband might be saved because of you? And don't you husband realize that your wife might be saved because of you? So that, that's it here. He said, if, if, the, if the unbeliever, you know, decide that, oh, you know, this lady, she all into the things of God now. She, you know, I can see her reading the Bible every time. I can see her going to church meetings. You know, a uh, uh, paying time and fasting and all that stuff. I can't stand out holy, holy stuff. So I'm going to leave. And he insists, he or she insists that they're going to leave. Paul is saying here that you, you don't have to follow them. You don't have to run after them. I mean, you are free to, you know, to, 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 to leave. You are free to be single now. Or, you, you know, you can be married because, uh, um, he is saying that if they, if they want to stay, they can stay. But if they decide to leave, because God is a God of peace, you can't be calling them or harassing them. Where you, oh, where you are? Where you are? I want to talk to you. Why you left me? That you, he, he's free to go because he cannot stand you being holy. He cannot stand you being doing the things of God. So you have to let, let him go. 
So then he came down to verse 16 and said, uh, Don't you wives your husband know that because of you, you can win your husband to Christ? You realize that your husband can be, might be saved because of you? So we have to pray for them. You know, if you're in that situation and you came to the can you and your husband were in the world together, you guys did not know God before you got married, and he you became a Christian now, you have to pray your husband into into his salvation. You have to constantly pray, pray and fast for him. Go to God, you know, and, and commit him to God, his mind, body, soul, and spirit. You know, say, God, please help my wife or my husband to come to know you. That's why you change me. You can change them. And pray to God diligently. God is going to hear your prayer, all right? He's going to hear your prayer, and he's going to save your, your wife or your husband. Because God is a God of peace. He does not like separation. Separation is not a good thing. It's not, it's, it's not very good. So let's say you got a divorce, or you are contemplating getting divorced. Seek direction from God. Seek him. Go to him. If you're in a situation where you think there's going to be a divorce, me, your husband, your honey, serious issue or your wife like everything is going crazy that's when you need to go on your knees that when you that that's not when you're going to be calling everybody and explaining your problems to them they're not going to help you they are not your manufacturer he is the manufacturer and he know what the what what what, what that product needs so he know how to take care of that product he know what to use to take care of that product so you have to go back to him say god this is the situation my heart my family is falling apart my marriage is getting destroyed please direct me which way i should go show me god i don't want this thing to go apart i don't want this thing to go crazy show me lord give me direction go to him fast and pray cry to him day and night and you're going to see what he's going to do for you okay because he said he don't like divorce so we need to fight for our marriages we need to fight for our family we can't just give up we can't just give up and allow because it's the enemy. You think it's just a marriage that he's destroying? That's why God is so particular on divorce and marriage. People say, oh, divorce is the same sin as lies and, 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 um, and stealing. Yes, he is, it's the same. But God is saying that and because this divorce is, is, is tying up with children, with family. This, this is a family thing. Families are going to be destroyed. And the children need both parents to be in their life. If one parent is missing, the family becomes dis dysfunctional. So that's why he don't want the family to be destroyed because a family, a good nation is based on a, you know, a good family. All right. If the family is, they got a lot of dysfunctional family in the nation. I think we can call that nation because it's all, you know, everything is just messed up. So every good thing comes from the family. So that's why God is so particular about this, about you know having a good family and having a good marriage, because divorce bring a lot of problems in marriages. All right. So he says, so, so, like I said, seek direction. Go to people. Who are you talking to about your situation? Some friends you tell your business to them. You and your husband having problems. They be like, oh yeah, you know he wrong. You want you to yeah, but so you got already right divorce him. You know yeah. You know, they try to make you feel like, you know, uh, uh, it's okay for you to separate from your, from your spouse. So you don't want to hang around people like that. You want to go to somebody that will say, come on, let's pray. Let's lock ourselves up for three, four days. Let's cry to God. I will join you, my sister and my brother. I'm going to join you so we can fight for that family that the devil is trying to destroy. Y'all go together and pray. Fast and pray. Cry to God. He said, when two agree. It is established. Go together with your, with your friends. Set a support group, a support system. And you pray together. Not just take your problems all over the place. If only God can say this thing. People take their marriages outside of God. And it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't help them. You cannot take this thing. Because this is God's idea. So how can you take it for him and take it to some, somewhere else? You cannot take it to a secular uh, a counselor. And they're not going to help you like the way you got to seek God first. Seek him first. All right? When there's an issue, go on your knees. Go to the Word. See what he said. He said, God, if a man found a woman, he found a good thing. If a man found a wife, he found a good thing, and he shall obtain favor from you. My husband has told me 
and his wife. And he has he uh, he's full of good things. So Lord, please guide this guide this ma uh, marriage. Protect this marriage. Give your marriage surrender your marriage to God. Why are you going to take it to some secular lawyer? They don't lawyers. They don't care for your family. They don't care for your kids. They don't care for you. They just want the money. They just want the money. You know, they you pay them. They give you a divorce certificate and you go. You're gonna be dealing with nothing. You're gonna some people drop their kids off at the gas station. The other one, the other parent come and pick them up. The other the kids spend Christmas with the other parent, spend Thanksgiving with this parent. It's just a whole you know dramatic stuff. So why can't you avoid it? Read the Bible. So this message is meaning for people that are contemplating on divorce. I pray that you listen to this message before you take the next step. It's not an easy thing. Put your children into consideration. Put your, put your family first. Do not be self-centered. Do not be egocentric. Do not be, it shouldn't be all by yourself. Okay? The kids are there. Especially if you have kids, they are there. Put them into consideration. Alright? So now we're going to go to uh, uh, um, Matthew... Let's see what, what Jesus said about this. You know, let's see what let's see what he said about about divorce and marriage. So this this the Pharisees came to him. So we're gonna read Matthew chapter 19, verse 2 to 12. Alright. So he said, large crowd followed him there, and he healed that healed he healed their sick. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with this question. Should a man be a should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? Then Jesus said, Haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied. They recall that from the beginning God made them male and female. He made them male and female to be one. Alright? He made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his mother and a father to be joined with his wife. Okay? To be joined with his wife. And the two are united into one. Since there are no more two but one, let no man, no one split apart what God has joined together. No man. Not, not your parents. Not your sisters. Not your brothers. Not even the lawyers. Not the law. Let no man separate them where God has joined together. All right? Then they asked the Pharisees, you know, they said, Then why Moses said that, said in the law that a man who gave his wife a written notice of divorce and sent her away, they asked. Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard heart. But it was not what God had originally intended. And I tell you this, whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery unless his wife has been unfaithful. So whoever married or divorcee, both of you are committing adultery in front of God. You have to repent. This is in the word of God. I am not saying this. This is the this is from Jesus. When the Pharisees asked him, this is what he told them. Let me go back in verse 9. He said, And I tell you, whosoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery. Unless his wife has been unfaithful. So Jesus' disciples then said to him, If this is the case, it is better not to marry. Because it's a tough cookie. Okay, it's a tough cookie. So he said, not everyone can accept this statement. Jesus said, only those who God helps. Some are born to Enoch, and some have been made Enoch by others, and so some choose to marry for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this, who can? All right? Yes. So he said, if a man, once you, you divorce your wife, you know, once you divorce your wife, you cannot remarry to anybody else once it's not because that's the only time he gave permission to divorce. It still grieves the heart. So that someone is asking, they say, but why did Moses 
Because people still living in Moses, you know, the Moses mosaic laws, you know. He said, why did they ask him, why did Moses allow divorce? So do, do you know why Moses allowed divorce? Because those days, the, those men were so evil to their wife. If a woman sneezed, they could put her away, they could divorce her. If she don't cook a good meal, they divorce her. If she say hi to any guy out there, they divorce her for the sim simplest reason. They were divorcing their wife. So because of peace sake, because they were very chaotic, because of peace sake, Moses said that so, so the lady can be free and remarry and go, you know, and do her stuff. But all no obligation, you have to give her a waiting, a waiting you know, a certificate. You have to, if you really want to divorce your wife, you have to give her a waiting certificate. That's what Moses allowed them. But that was Jesus said, he said, it was not the will of God. It was Moses' way of bringing peace those days. But now we are not living under the regime of Moses. We are under the New Testament. We are listening to what Jesus is telling us. Jesus said that no man is allowed to divorce the wife unless it's in sexual immorality. All right? Oh, and for me, I believe that sexual immorality is not only between a man and a woman. It's almost uh, like homosexual. You know, if you cheat on your wife with another man or another woman, it's the same thing. It's adultery. Or you attach to pornographic, you know, you masturbate and all that stuff. Those are all consists of adultery. All right? But you need to go ask God. So even as though he, he, is, he is allowing you to get divorced because of uh, unfaithfulness, if you do forgive your husband, he will even be more happy with you and you guys. He will bless that union and you guys will live happily. We need to learn how to forgive. So this thing is very serious. So people that, that haven't gotten married yet, you have to read this. Because you have to be prepared for all these things before you get into marriage. That you cannot leave. So you have to be very careful who you get married to. You have to be very careful because you cannot get married next month or three months. You kind of find out that this person is not compatible. This person is not, you and the person not going in the same place. That's what I always tell you in my, in my video. You have to discover your life purpose before you can find your husband. Because if you discover who you are, you are whole and single, you're not going to settle for any, for any less. You're going to find a person that you guys are going to the same direction. But a lot of people got married and they don't know why they were getting married. They just married because maybe they think they're in love. Or maybe they think, they, you know, a biological clock was ticking. They're getting older. Or they want to have kids. They're getting old. You know, people marry for different reasons. But you have to be very careful because after your salvation... Marriage is the next, the, the second important decision you make in your life. So you don't take it lightly. You have to be very, because there's a law. Everything is a law. We're not under the law anymore, but we are under the commandments. God, Jesus did not come to cancel the commandments. He came to fulfill the commandments, the promises of Moses. Okay? So you cannot marry to divorce a woman if you are not, if she is not unfaithful or obeying. So if you did, you have to remain single or you have to go back and reconcile with that lady or that man. You have to go. So let's say it comes to, because there's different, different situations. Let's say it comes to physical abuse, you know, emotional abuse. Some men are very dangerous. That's when we have the law. You're still not allowed to divorce a person if you are abused physically. It's in the Bible. He only said for unfaithfulness. If you are on the, your life is in danger, you move out, separate yourself, get the law involved, let them deal with the situation. Okay? Because sometimes separation can, can be a wake-up call. If you move out with the children, if, you, if kids involved, that man or woman who is being abusive will get a, you know, a, 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 what they call it, they'll be like, oh, you know, let me slow down. I'm, I'm losing my family. So sometimes separation it's very important, but every time they beat you and you stay there, then you enable them to do to do more. All right. So get the law involved. That's why we have the law on that. The law will take care of that. If you need to be penalized to be, you know, dealt with, let the law do that. But you cannot, you're not allowed to divorce him because he being abusive or for whatever reason. But if there's other, you know, like maybe some other difficult reason, I'm not gonna sit there and indulge divorce. Because I know my Bible is not telling me to do it. 
I'm here to put families together. I'm here to restore broken relationships. I'm here to help build solid relationships using kingdom principles. So if there's an issue in your marriage that is very complicated, you go to call and ask him. He's going to speak to you. Jesus is very faithful. He's very loving. He's very kind. He's not going to stone you to death. But if you can avoid it by all means, avoid it. Because at the, at always the, the, the lady at the where she had him went, she went and he told her, You have five husbands. All right? You have five husbands, and the one you are with now is not your husband. But I forgave you. Repent now and go and sin no more. So if you did this thing, you know, you're on this video, watching this video. If you if you if you divorced before, you know, you had a divorce and you didn't know, you have not heard a message like this before. Don't stone yourself to death. Alright? God is a Jesus is a forgiving God. He is very merciful. You he 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 he's a God of restoration. He can restore the broken hearted. He can he will he said he will restore everything the locals have stolen. So you don't have to cure yourself. Go to him for in, in repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I did I did this thing the wrong way, but I, we come to you. Let's say you, uh, you divorce your husband, and and um and you 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 know because it was not because of in, in, uh, sexual immorality you got just separated and you went and got married to somebody. You and that person you are still married. You and your husband still married in the eyes of God. So your new marriage God is not in the mix of that. God is not in that mix of that of that marriage unless you guys go to God. And tell him, God, we didn't know what we were doing. You know, we did it on our own. We put ourselves together. We asked him not to come into our union and bless our family. And he would definitely come because he loved for us to repent. You know, for us, he must see our heart. He knows our heart. He knows your motives and intentions. But you have to open your mouth and go to him and say, Have mercy on me, O God. All right? So Luke chapter, chapter 16, verse 18 says, For example, a man who divorces his wife and marries someone else commit adultery. And anyone who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Plain and simple. Any woman that married a husband, a woman that divorced from her husband, they commit adultery. And anybody that married a man that divorced from his wife, they commit adultery. So let's say, for example, you have all right to divorce your husband. There was, un there was, uh, uh, there was an unfaithfulness, you know, sexual stuff going on. And you are you are free, you're divorcing, you are free now to marry. But then you went back and married to another man who divorced his wife without any unfaithfulness. It's also an error. You fall into another trap. You have to find somebody who is clean, who has never been married before, to get married to. But if you did that, that's what I'm saying. If you even did that, go to God and He will forgive you. He's not gonna write you off. You just have to repent and He will come to you. In uh, First Corinthians chapter Second Cor uh, no 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 sorry Second Corinthians um, chapter seven verse thirty nine say a wife is bound to her husband as long as she lives. If her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone. So once your husband is still alive, you cannot marry to another person. If it's not for sexual immorality, you are bound to that man in the eyes of God. God does not like separation. You don't want to see families separating. It's not a good thing. You know, it's not a good thing. All right? It's not, it's not a good thing. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I have a few little tips for you. And um, it's, uh, well, first one would be like, don't date a man who is separated from his wife. It's an error. Maybe a man, he's probably going through separation, and he, he moved out of the house, and you there dating him, praying, you know, wishing for him to divorce his wife, for you to come and marry him. That's wrong. God, God and him will never be in that marriage. That's, that's a marriage that men put together. It's not a marriage that God will put together, because it's not the will of God. So if, you, if you're in that situation now, you have to leave that man, and go and wait for your own man to come to get married to you don't, you don't, you don't want that. You don't, you want God's blessing. You have to be in right standing with God. All right. So don't get divorced from your spouse and marry to another divorcee. Who, who was it? Who it wasn't done because of sexual immorality. 
seek guidance in case of abandonment. Some men will abandon you. They just take off and leave. They find a young girl and just leave their family and just go. Go to a guy and seek him. He will direct you. Because you cannot stay there and be waiting for 10, 20 years, you know. For you have to seek God, God, and he said you should stay single for the rest of your life. That's not all to it. You know, you, you, you're not going to die if you don't marry. You, you, so you, you, you have to, you, all you need, will, people are so focused on this marriage, marriage thing. Like, if they don't marry, they're going to die. Marriage, there's no marriage in heaven. It's only here on earth. You know, you will see your husband up there, you'll be like brothers and sisters. You're not going to be husband and wife, so why, why should you kill yourself because of you want to be married? It's a good thing, yeah, everybody want to have a family. It's very good, it's a good thing, but don't kill yourself, it's not coming. Seek God first, seek your purpose. Ask God what He want you, what he want you to do for you, what he, what he want you to do for Him on this earth, okay? We don't have time, time is passing us by. Instead of you just putting all your time into wanting to marry a husband, wanting to marry a husband. It's that you're not going to be fulfilled in finding a husband. You're only going to find fulfillment in fulfilling God's purpose for your life. That's where your fulfillment comes from. It's not having a husband. Alright? So let's, let's, let's take this seriously. Discover your purpose and find your husband. And let's be loving, caring to one another. You can forgive your husband if you commit adultery. You can also forgive him. You know, they, they will tell you, oh, yeah, you are, you got all grounds to divorce him now because he committed adultery. You can forgive him, and there can be life after that. Don't, do not leave your husband. You know, I'm not trying to encourage men to cheat on their wife. Some people just do foolishness. Men, you know, once in a while, they will just go to prison because of that one mistake. You're going to leave him? What is only because of you? You know, God put that man in your life so he can meet Jesus through you. All your love that you're going to uh, uh, exhibit to him. You know, he cheated on you and you, 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 you've been hurt and everything. But you still love him, you forgive him, you still face the fool, you still do stuff for him. Do you, don't you know that I'm going to bring him close to God? He's going to be like, oh my gosh, everything I did to this lady, she still love and care about me. I want to follow this God that she's serving. I want to, I want to know this God that made for her. She's so hard heart. She's so compassionate. She's so loving. This has to be a God of love and compassion. So I want to follow that God. Yeah, sometimes he put us, I, I did a quote yesterday. Sometimes he put us in some devastating situation to demonstrate his love to mankind. He will put you in an awkward situation. And then you, you, you don't have anything else to do but just to show love. But he's teaching you how to forgive, how to love people. No matter what, you cannot only love people that love you. You cannot only love people that are being good and nice to you. They got some people that be so ugly and mean to you. You still have to show them love. He said, what good is there to only love people that love you? What sacrifice are you making? You cannot love people that just love you. It's no benefit for you. You have to love people that love that that hate you that that despise you that do wrong to you those are the people that when you show love and compassion to then she says be like oh yes this is my child she has my attributes she carry my image she carry a heart of god all right so let's try to forgive one another let's try to build our family don't run to the divorce go for every little thing you know more face and you regret you 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 you're gonna regret it the children are gonna be Left with all your father, they're going to be left with all your mother. You're pulling, calling, and pulling in. They cannot, they cannot get mommy love. They cannot get daddy love. Maybe mommy is going to move out of state. It's just too much for them. So let's try to be loving and forgiving. And for all these things, adultery, and all this stuff, guard your heart. If there's, any, if there's any temptation coming to take you to go and, 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 and fornicate or to you know, commit adultery, sorry. Pray to God, say, God, please, I'm falling, help me. I see that girl, you know, at work, she's very attractive. Take my mind off of her. Go to God, go in your closet, in your bathroom, and run. And say, God, please, calm my heart. I don't want to fall. I don't want to, I don't want to be lost after that woman. Or I don't want to be lost after that man. We are humans. You know, you can see a nice looking guy, you'll be like, oh my God. But you have to guard your heart. Self-control is one of the fruit of the spirit. You have to control yourself. You cannot just fall like that. So we can we can control these things. 
We can't be, we cannot allow the flesh to carry us away. You know, we cannot fast some of no bad behavior or fast them away. Fast, go to God and pray, say, God, say this. I have this bad behavior. I don't like the way I do things. Please take it away from me. And God will definitely take it away from you because He sees your heart. He sees he see your motives and your intentions. He's going to help you to, 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 to deliver you. All right? So thank you for joining me. Let's just say a word of prayer. And then we're going to close this uh, section. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word. I pray that this word will reach whoever is going to need to be reached, Father. I pray that you bless marriages, Lord. I commit families to you. I commit children to you, Lord. I commit husbands, wives to you, O oh God, that are going through some serious situation in the home. Father, Lord, I pray for peace. I pray for unity, O oh God, because you are a God of peace. You are a God of uh, unity. Father, Lord, you are a God of love and compassion. It's not your way, Lord, to see marriages getting destroyed. So I commit marriages to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I commit marriages to you, O oh God. Father, Lord, let your way be done. I cover the marriages, the homes, the family with the blood of Jesus. I pray that you restore the broken marriages, the broken relationships. And Father, if there's anybody on this line who who has been living in error, you know, did it the wrong way. I stay with them to join the faith with them to ask you for forgiveness and let them start afresh. Because you are a God of restoration. You are a God of redemption. So I commit them to you and I stand with them and ask you, Lord, to please have mercy. Please have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We glorify you. And we honor you, O God. We give you all the praise. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you for restoring marriages. Thank you for bringing families back together. Thank you, thank you for uniting children with their parents, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because I know that's the cry of your heart. So we just want to give you all the glory and give you all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And then hit the, the bell so that whenever there's a new video, you can always receive notification. Alright? Love you all. See you next time.